the first thing I do is take a detailed history. You know, you have to find out what symptoms the patient is experiencing, how they've changed over five years or shorter or longer periods of time. Um, is, are they symptoms just in the area of original polio? Are they involving other parts of the body where the person didn't think they had polio? Then you do a neurological exam. Um, you test nerves and muscles, test strength, test, test tone, measure the muscles to see if they look thinner, if they're asymmetrically thin. You can check sensation, sensitivity to sharp or temperature or vibratory sensation, and check reflexes. In a polio survivor with post-polio symptoms, what you would expect to see is consistent history, as we've already discussed, no other illness that they know about that could be mimicking it or contributing to it, um, no medicines that they might have been placed on that could be causing muscle weakness or fatigue. You would expect to see some atrophy, especially in a polio limb from their original attack. You would expect to see some weakness in that limb. You would not expect to see atrophy and weakness in a limb that they swore up and down never had polio. And if you do, you, know, you make a little you know, kind of red flag to, to check into that further. You would not expect to see changes in sensation. They do not develop numbness as part of post-polio syndrome. And the reflexes can often be um, normal. You, know, you wouldn't expect to see them brisk. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see them diminished um, unless there was so much muscle weakness that you couldn't generate a reflex. So from that exam, if you find something unusual, and usually the unusual things you're going to find are weakness in an area where there was never polio or sensory changes. At that point, probably the most effective test um, to figure out what's going on with these unusual symptoms would be an electrical diagnostic test, an electromyogram or nerve conduction study. If there is a problem with the sensory nerves, which would suggest something totally different from post-polio, you can actually check the electrical response of the sensory nerves. It will be slower. And you'll say, you know, you have a neuropathy caused by something else. Your sensory nerves are involved, even if the motor nerves are also involved. And then we're going to work you up for vitamin deficiencies, thyroid problems, other medical illnesses, you know, immune system problems that could be attacking these peripheral nerves. Um, and in about one-third of people, we actually find some other neurologic problem which is contributing to this. If they have weakness and atrophy in their good right arm, which never had polio, my polio was only in my legs, you could do an electrical test that could show changes of old polio on the electromyogram. So this electrical test can help you define what was truly the original polio, even if they're unaware that they may have had mild symptoms in an arm and now that arm is developing post-polio symptoms, and it can also reveal another neurologic problem. So that's like kind of the first test that I would order. If there were excessively brisk reflexes or ma marked difference from right to left, I would probably also do imaging. Um, if there was spinal pain, I would do imaging to make sure that there wasn't a pinched nerve in the spine giving the asymmetry um, or the changes in reflexes. So those would be the two non-blood related tests that would give you the most information. Mm -hmm.